Christmas from the Long Ago by J. W. Wright, read in English. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. We always used grandmother's stocking because it was the biggest one in the family, much larger than mother's, and somehow it seemed to be able to stretch more than hers. There was so much room in the foot, too, a chance for all sorts of packages. There was a carpet-covered couch against the flowered wall in one corner of the parlour. Between the foot of it and the chimney was the door into our bedroom. I always hung my stocking at the side of the door nearest the couch, on the theory, well defined in my mind with each recurring Christmas, that if by any chance Santa Claus bought me more than he could get into the stocking, he could always pile the overflow on the couch. And he always did. It may seem strange that a lad who seldom heard even the third getting-up call in the morning should have awakened without any calling once a year, or that his red night-gowned figure should have leapt from the depth of his feather-bed or that he should have crept breathless and fearful to the door where the stocking hung. Notwithstanding the ripe experience of years past, when each Christmas found the generous stocking stuffed with good things, there was always the chance that Santa Claus might have forgotten this year, or that he might have miscalculated his supply and not had enough to go around, or that he had not been correctly informed as to just what you wanted or that some accident might have befallen his reindeer and sleigh to detain him until the grey dawn of Christmas morning stopped his work and sent him scurrying back to his toy kingdom to await another yuletide. And so, in the fearful silence and darkness of that early hour, with stilled breath and heart beating so loudly you thought it would awaken every one in the house, you softly opened the door, poked your arm through, felt around where the stocking ought to be, but with a great sinking in the heart when you couldn't find it the first time. And finally, your chubby fist clutched the misshapen, lumpy, bulging fabric that proclaimed a generous Santa Claus. Yes, it was there. That was enough for the moment. A hurried climb back into the warm bed, and then interminable years of waiting till your attuned ear caught the first sounds of grandmother's dressing in her nearby bedroom and the first gleam of winter daylight permitted you to see the wondrous stocking and the array of packages on the sofa. It was beyond human strength to refrain from just one look. But alas, the sight of a dapple grey rocking horse with silken mane and flowing tail was too much, and the next moment you were in the room with your arms around the arch neck, while peals of unrestrained joy brought the whole family to the scene. Then it was that Mother gathered you into her lap and wrapped her skirt about your bare legs and held your trembling form tight in her arms until you promised to get dressed if they would open just one package, the big one on the end of the sofa. After that there was always, Just one more, Mother, please, and by that time the base burner was warming up and you were on the floor in the middle of the discarded wrapping paper uncovering each wondrous package down to the very last the very, very last, in the very toe of the stocking. The big round one that you were sure was a real leg ball, but which proved to be nothing but an orange. There was a new high-powered motor in my garage. It came to me yesterday, Christmas. It is very beautiful, and it cost a great deal of money. A very great deal. If we were in the little old town, it would take us all out to Aunt Em's farm in ten minutes. It always took her an hour to drive in with the old spotted white mare. I am quite happy to have this wonderful new horse of today, and there is some warmth inside of me as I walk round it in the garage while Henry, its keeper, flicks with his chamois every last vestige of dust from its shiny sides. And yet... How gladly would I give it up if only I could have been in my feather bed last night. If I could have awakened at daybreak and crept softly red flannelled and barefooted to the parlour door. If I could have groped for grandmother's stocking and felt its lumpy shape respond to my eager touch. And if I could have known the thrill of that dapple grey rocking horse when I flung my arms around its neck and buried my face in its silken mane. 
End of Christmas by J. W. Wright